Before that, I just want to take a minute to talk about uh, a few things that I taught defensively in terms of concepts and principles. So you can understand how these ideas kind of fit into what we emphasized overall. Um, I'm big on no threes, no layups and tough twos. Um, I want our opponents to have to take semi-contested mid-range jump shots. And that just all stems um, from the points per possession. You can see the breakdown percentage wise there, how it is in your favor. If you don't give up points in the deep paint, you get, don't give up points behind the three point arc. So that was a big selling point for our guys. Make them dribble into their shot, no layups, no threes, tough twos. We really emphasize positioning and we've been a pack line team for the most part, staying inside the pack. So one pass away, uh, I'm big on help comes from the help side. We don't help one pass away. Now there's some scout specific things where that might change, but generally speaking, the general rule of thumb is one pass away, we don't show our numbers, we don't show our chest. We got our butt to the ball. We're looking down our front shoulder here with split vision, seeing ball and man. Uh, two passes away, and this is where we really emphasize uh, line rules. So if the ball's above the free throw line, we're straddling the lane line. If the ball's below the free throw line, we're straddling the midline. And that's all relative to your positioning. And guys say, why are you on me? I'm a step or two away from where you want me to be. Well, if there's a baseline drive here and your teammates, depending on you to rotate over and take their man, and you're here on the lane line instead of the midline, you're going to be late. And that's a three-point play or a layup instead of being in position, maybe forcing a tough contested two, taking a charge or no shot at all. So what is a peel switch? And before I get into what a peel switch is, why did I think about implementing this? Um, I've, I became familiar with it the last two years. I looked at it in the quarantine year. We started implementing some drills to try to work on it but I was never fully comfortable in using it. And by the time we were, the season was already over given it was a six week season. So this past season being a full goal season, uh, I really thought it might help our team because I didn't feel like we had a true lockdown defender or lockdown defenders. I was concerned about our on ball defense overall, just because our we weren't the most athletic team. And I knew we were gonna play a lot of zone because we had some size. Um, but as we all know, you can get shot out of a zone and you can't be a one trick pony. So I wanted to make sure when we did have to go, man, we had something that was a little bit different and was able to um, maybe cause some confusion for the opponent. So what is appeal switch? Appeal is communicated by the on ball defender or the help defender. And this is this happens when they recognize that they've been blown by and there is a the ball handler has gotten by the on ball defender. And if you think of run and jump uh, rotations in a full court press, and you kind of think about that right now in the half court, that's kind of what it looks like. And I'm going to show you the diagrams in a second, but think about that right now. So in a peel switch, the players rotating will keep their new assignment. So if it's a baseline drive and you're going to see diagrams in a second, and I'm the low man on the, the bottom of the eye and I rotate over, I'm not helping and recovering. I'm staying on that matchup. And then the guy that gets beat is going to rotate to the next guy and everybody's dropping. So essentially you're avoiding having two on the basketball. Um, and, and it's, it's a way where we have found we've gotten some steals and some deflections because teams are instinctively thinking, Oh, that pass is open the baseline drip pass open, but there's a defender coming from out of their line of vision down to get a steal or a deflection. There's a variety of ways you can use this concept. I'm going to show you a few diagrams that I didn't necessarily use it this way, but it all depends on your system. Like I said before, we were primarily help coming from the help side. So I'll show you the ways we did it, but there's also a few ways you can do it. Uh, the two rotations we drilled daily are what I call baseline drive and then top outside drives, which you'll see momentarily here on these diagrams. Good. Okay. So this first one here, you're going to see, this is a top beat situation. And uh, a lot of the drilling we did out of this was dribble drive set up where we'd have the five man opposite the ball and dunk in the dunker spot. Um, so you can see in this situation, 
uh, the X1 gets beat off the dribble, all right? Help doesn't come from the help doesn't come from the ball side. So X2 is bluffing, recovering back to his man in the corner. And the next man to rotate up would be X5. And we talk about helping. So when you start doing this, the guys, just like any rotation, those are gonna start helping close to the elbow or a little bit below the elbow or right around, you know, uh, 12, 10, 12 feet away. They're helping too early. So we talked about the volleyball line on our court as being the spot where we want to get our, our heels on to help. So we'd have our big guy going over to contest and wall up on this shot about 10 feet away. So if they're going to shoot this, I consider this a tough two. We got our biggest guy rotating over to contest a shot. And uh, again, it's a, it's a pull-up jump shot. It's, it's low percentage-wise. So you can see from here, the three man in the corner, if the ball's here, he's straddling the lane line anyways. So it's a short drop for him to get inside of the five man. Now that's something that you give up is if you're undersized, they might be able to throw over the top of you, but we worked on getting inside of that, getting physical. So that was not an easy pass. You would see the opposite top guy rotating the corner. And this is a lot of times where you'll see this driver Okay, they see this guy help and they, th they see this pass is an open, but the next progression is to look over here. And a lot of times you're gonna see a clip we have on the film where X4 would come from behind and get a steal from behind this pass here because the ball handler couldn't see him. <laughs>